and topics from the organic sector. There are always things to learn. And today we are focusing on a very important topic that is concerned with the uh, worldwide pandemic. So it's about the emerging trends in certification during the time of pandemic and what we can learn from that. So we have experts here from Europe and also from India that will let us know how they handle and manage this uh, challenge. So uh, we guide you, Sandra and me, we have the honor to guide you through this program. So we have 90 minutes ahead with certifications topic, with all these presentations, high quality presentations and the discussion and also your questions. So please, First, let me also introduce Shiva Kumar. He is the group director of Nuremberg Messe India and member of the management board. And he will uh, give us uh, his welcome note. Please, Shiva Kumar, the screen is yours. Thank you, Karen. Uh, good afternoon to everyone from India. On behalf of Nuremberg Messe India, I take this opportunity to welcome one and all for today's webinar the fourth in the series, which for sure will continue to be an interactive engagement platform for the organic industry in India for the next few months. It is my pleasure to welcome our esteemed panelists, delegates to the webinar organized in Nuremberg Messe India on the topic, emerging trends in certification in times of pandemic under the ambit of BOFAC India, which as you all know, is India's biggest exhibition for the organic sector, being organized with an aim of bringing various domain experts together on a single platform to address the key issues of sustainability and healthy living. Once again, I was sincere thanks to APIDA for their continued support in organizing BioPAC with us. Today, on the occasion of this webinar, I would like to especially welcome our esteemed panelist, Mr. Michel, Vice President, EcoCert SA, Mr. Frank, Founding Director, Organic Services, GMBH, Dr. Vinay Kumar, Chairman, Control Union India, Ms. Vishalakshi Padmanabhan, Consultant Executive Director, PGS Organic Council. And of course, a warm welcome to our moderators, Ms. Karin Heinz, founder of Bio Reporter International from Germany, and Mr. Sandeep, board member IFOM Asia for their valuable ideas, knowledge, and time to make this program a successful one continuously. Also, a warm welcome to all the attendees today for today's session and extremely grateful for your continued support to our BioFAC events over the year. I'm sure once again, you're going to make the most out of today's session. To make the program more interactive, we will have poll and question answer sessions in between. I also thank our supporting association, ECOVA, the International Competition of Organic Agriculture, OFI, the Organic Farming Association of India, then AOI, the Association of Indian Organic Industry, and our media partner, Pure and Echo India, for their support at the series of the webinars. Before I hand over the floor for today's discussion, I also take this opportunity to make an important announcement on our BioFAC India 2020 show. The 12th edition will be organized in a digital format during October 29 to 31st of this year by Nuremberg Mass India. The WeGo Digital Edition will offer comprehensive presentation options not just for three days, but it is going to be an year long networking community building opportunities. The digital event will be held under the aegis of Agriculture and Processed Food Products Export Development Authority, which is APIDA, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, and would aim to e connect all the play key players from the organic and natural industry over a single platform. Now I will leave the floor open for discussions and presentations. Thank you. Over to Sandeep and Karin. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shiva Kumar. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very exciting to be the first ever digital platform uh, in the organic world, and I think also in India and definitely in the world. So, dear participants, as you probably noticed, we have now moved from Zoom to our WebEx platform for our webinars. The, the participants are returning. And to make this webinar as interesting, helpful, and interactive as possible for you, please let me explain some technical issues on WebEx to have the best performance a lively discussion and an interactive session with you.
to make the voice quality as best as possible, please make sure your mics are muted. Only the speaker's mics are switched on. At the bottom of your WebEx screen, you will see a chat box, which is the fifth box, which is for your comments. Uh, you can also uh, uh, click on the three dots and you'll get a question and answer option to put your questions over there. We will try to answer as many questions as we can during this session. Uh, some of them may not be possible to be answered, so I request you to put your email ID next to your questions and we'll try to get back to you uh, after this webinar. We also really appreciate your feedback, so we will have a quick poll during the webinar, and after the webinar, we will send you a feedback form so that we can improve. All those who submit a feedback form will also receive a participation certificate. This event is being live streamed on YouTube and also recorded, so you can follow it after the webinar at the Nuremberg, at the Biofark India YouTube channel or the BioReporter International website, as well as the BioReporter International YouTube channel. Uh, Ravi, please show the link. And Karen, over to you. Yeah, thank you so much. So again, for all who joined us later, welcome to our webinar. But now it's uh, my pleasure to introduce our first expert, and that is Michel Renault. He's vice president of EcoCert Group, and he is French, but living in Germany since long, if not traveling. His, edu his education is, was in agriculture and economy and a specific education in organic and biodynamic farming. So since 1984, he is involved in the organic farming. As coordinator of the French Organic Pharma Federation, FNAB, and member of the French Organic Advisors Association, ACAB. Then in Germany as a farmer on a biodynamic farm. In 1991, he is the founding member, he was one of the founding members of EcoCert, where he is vice president now and in charge of international and institutional relations. He's member of many committees like uh, EcoCert and um, EMO and among others, he's also a member of IFOM Organics Europe. So we have the honor and the pleasure to listen now to your presentation. Michelle, please, the screen is yours. Uh, thank you, Karin, and um, I have also the pleasure, it's for me, uh, and thank you for the invitations uh, for this um, uh, webinar. It's really a pleasure uh, for me. So we will start with the first slide. We have the next, please. Uh, yes, I propose to you to, uh, in a couple of minutes, which is a big challenge, uh, to go through, uh, to travel through the time of certification. So, um, I will try in a few minutes to, from the prehistory certification to the digital certification. So, it's really a challenge. I will remind very quickly the objective of certifications, and then I will present you the situation before, during, and uh, after the, uh, after COVID-19. Uh, uh, Next slide. Yes, very, very shortly, but I think it's important in order to make it sure we understand all the same when we speak about certification. So it's, uh, it's really a formal system or procedure as you want, um, by which a certification body or a group uh, assess and verify. And it's very important. This is according to assess and verify the compliance to specific requirements. And it's clear for us, uh, it's concerned the uh, organic standards and then to attest the compliance to these standards and to make it sure uh, uh, the farmers' processes have fill uh, all the requirements. And then we have to, uh, to come to the situation with this pandemic. Um, and uh, what is the certification in terms of pandemic? Uh, as, you, as I mentioned before, we have to verify and to assess and how to do it when we cannot travel, when, when we cannot be on site. But it's a challenge in terms that we have to maintain this balance, uh, which should continue to allow the farmers and processors and all actors in the uh, uh, activities and business of organic uh, to have a fair competition among the uh, organic sectors. It means that uh, we have must be able to continue to verify it if they comply with the standards. But on the other side, we should also maintain the guarantee and the trust uh, uh, to the consumer. So it's a big challenge because we lost a big tool that we use since years and years, which is the physical inspections. And then we have 
we should adapt to uh, to these situations and try to find ways uh, among the um, certification bodies, but also all the actors from farmers to uh, exporters and importers. So next slide. As before COVID, um, I, I tried to say to say we, we are in certification 2.0. I please uh, forget the certification 1.0, uh, uh, which is really based on papers and not really uh, structured. But the difference between the 1.0 and 2.0, I think it's more that we introduce some, I will say, some electronic uh, uh, tools, but it's not a big difference than by the way we did for 40 years, for example. So the assessment is based mainly on three uh, things. And the most important today that we have since years and years is uh, this uh, physical on-site inspections. And clear, we have also document review on, on some way and test. When I speak about test, is uh, some analysis uh, we do not only on pesticide but on all uh, non-allowed uh, uh, substances. And the most tools uh, used, we uh, carry out all certification. We are carrying out a risk assessment to see if the operators or the supply chain is a low risk, uh, high risk, or a middle risk. We started for many years now with software uh, like ESERT, for example, uh, which is the most known and the most used uh, by uh, the certification bodies. Uh, software with integrated checklist. We use electronic certificate. We have database of certificate, but we are not in the way or in the world of digitalization. I will say uh, we are in the world of to try to have some electronic tools but we are not really uh, in a digital world. Next slide. And during the COVID-19, I take only one example, our uh, one authority, and I take the European one, where it's much more uh, comfortable with. Uh, it, it's very interesting. Uh, it's many things were not possible during years and years, and through the pandemic or the, because of the pandemic, many things were possible. And it was interesting to see also our authorities uh, react quite positively and they were very open with the certification bodies but also all the sectors to try to find uh, solutions in the frame of, of the regulations so um the, uh, yes okay the um, the commissions and the European Union so accept to uh, to replace the physical audits by remote audits uh, but only first for operators uh, at low risk they accept that we do it, but not to replace uh, for the other operators with middle and high risk. They accept that we do remote inspections, but uh, they think that before the end of the year, we should carry out a physical inspection, which is maybe uh, would be not possible when we see uh, the second wave of uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, coming on in many uh, uh, European countries. So we have to postpone uh, some physical and try to uh, uh, to do uh, remote inspections. They reduce the sampling uh, in order to make it able all over the year uh, to carry this. And it was the same what the additional uh, random inspection was reduced from 10 to 5%. So they really uh, see the situation and uh, really try to, to, to find some solution. Next slide. So during the COVID, um, and I speak here uh, all um, concerning the certification, but not only uh, from uh, ECOCERT, because we really uh, on the European level, but also international, we have really close corporations to, uh, to work all together. And um, as it was not impossible, possible, sorry, uh, to have on-site inspections, uh, due to difficulty to travels, uh, we have to try to find some ways. So there was a possibility to uh, to do some physical inspection in some ways, uh, for example, in Germany, but uh, without with uh, uh, a distance, the social distance, not to where the farmers was not present, but uh, there's possibility to be on site without uh, having the operators present there when we have to uh, uh, to uh, to check the access to pastures or to open area for uh, poultry or to uh, to see some fields. Uh, the physical control with the respect of social distance was, was a possibility, but mostly uh, which was used is remote assessment and uh, documentation verifications that we use the whole platform, you know, from Zoom to uh, uh, um, to Teams and uh, uh, and all, all the platform existing uh, for this. 
And also, we could also use the control of the distribution levels, try to make verification of labeling to make it sure that there's no misuse, uh, traceability uh, uh, with uh, system traces certificate of inspections, which is really no 100% uh, digital with uh, electronic signatures. So it's very a uh, uh, move, and we see that there was a, like an acceleration of the process uh, uh, to move uh, to this. Uh, next slide. So during uh, COVID-19, uh, I um, allow me to speak about certification 2.0H, and when I say H, is for hybrids because we we are really uh, with this pandemic, we we had to uh, to react very quickly uh, and uh, in with a lot of constraints. And this hybrid for me is uh, is a mix between the remote approach and some embryon of digitalizations, but I would say it's like a pre-staging for certification 3.0, which I'll call as uh, digital, uh, digitalizations uh, certifications. So we, um, it's interesting that we learn from this is that uh, these remote inspections also have obliged operators to be better prepared because we have to go online to exchange documents so it's uh, uh, they uh, were obliged also to be better prepared by sending documents or the sharing uh, screen and, and so on and uh, uh, it was interesting also it was not an impact on certification bodies uh, uh, only but also on the operators remote um, inspection have been obliged also to have inspection based on quality management of the operators so much more using uh, that the operators are doing, and uh, not only this uh, through the checklist, but uh, a, a better exchange and also to better identify the self-management there. And this is also um, concern from the small farmers or group of operators and also uh, processors. They have their management and this, it was interesting that it must be more based on this for sure on the trust uh, because of the distance, uh, then we have to, we were obliged to use much more uh, uh, these kind of things, which is, I think, a, a big progress and uh, maybe a, a door opens uh, to change also the way to do uh, control and certifications. And but it's still this so-called binary approach for me is it's organic, not organic, and we are not going uh, beyond this. For example, uh, to uh, see the performance uh, of uh, uh, operators, uh, farmers, and processors. Next slide. When we come to uh, um, the after COVID, this is uh, uh, the futures or the very near futures. I think it's clear that the main change and uh, um, uh, I see is that we will move from this so-called checklist ap ap uh, approach to a data management. So today we check if it's okay, you have this, you repair this. Uh, I think we will use the new te technology uh, uh, for this, especially uh, with the data. Farmers have many data, we have many data, we can cross check and really we need uh, the use of uh, uh, data management uh, for this. We will use more uh, technology like the drone, like the uh, geo uh, target photographs, satellite image. We start already also with a, uh, with a project in, uh, in EcoCert using the satellite image. You, you can, through satellite image, uh, have a follow up of a crop rotation from year to year. So it's very tool. You do not need to be aware. So it will be an additional tool for this. I think we will keep a mix of physical and remote inspections. I think it's very important to have this physical, this social contact with the farmers, but maybe probably we will use the time on site much more better than we do now by checking some documents. We can do it before or the machine or the computer could also make some cross check. We will, uh, will be helpful and I, I'm sure we will be much more efficient for the time we will be on site. And also, but it's not only in terms of uh, uh, tools and technology, uh, we will move toward performance assessment more than binary system. And I think the, the, cost, uh, the, the consumers also, they want also to see uh, uh, the performance in terms of water management, in terms of many management, what we have in terms of biodiversity. And, and this is not one thing which is uh, yes or no, it's, it's really a continuous uh, uh, improvement. And I think we have also to move uh, to this and the tools will uh, help, us, help us on, on this way. And I'm sure Frank will uh, explain us uh, much more uh, on, on these uh, kind of things. Uh, it will be a step-by-step -step approach, uh, but it's sure that the effect of the pandemic will uh, really speed these transitions. Uh, we have seen what it was not possible 
I will say a couple of months before it's no, uh, it's no uh, possible. Next slide. I want to thank you for your intentions and uh, um, I'm sure Frank will uh, be more, um, go deeper uh, uh, in the uh, technology uh, approach. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michel. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Uh, we now welcome Frank Gerrit, the Director of Organic Services. He has been educated as an agriculture economist and a wholesale manager. Frank started his career as a, in an organic wholesale company and was responsible for sales there. He then moved to Naturland, uh, the, in, the International Farmers Association, and, and a private organic certifier. In that period, he led the development of the innovative IT software for admin as well as management of organic certification services and the respective operators. Frank is a world-renowned uh, recognized expert in software-based quality management with a focus on traceability and risk-based audit management. As one of the founding directors of organic services, since 20, 2004, uh, Frank is working with both national and international levels, and he frequently presents software-based quality and food safety concepts at conferences trade fairs and webinars like this. Frank, the screen is yours. Can you invite me? Yeah, it's we can. Pleasure. Yeah. 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 Frank, the screen Great. is yours. Thanks. So it's a real pleasure to to be part of this exciting webinar. It's a, I think it's a great um, approach to bridge these pandemic times. You uh, you may have understood from the introduction of Sandeep that I'm involved in the organic movement since many many years. However, at the same time I'm I'm uh, I became an IT guy, so I'm involved in many many IT projects, which th still thrills me, and I want to share this excitement with you today. Uh, basically, I want to take up the ball from Michelle and introduce a little bit more about technology. Uh, digitalization is key for the sector and COVID is just one driver and uh, there is more which I want to uh, um, put in, in the focus here. To also give you a little bit of background, the organic movement is, is very old, right? It started in the 80s with public regulations, but it started way earlier. Uh, the um, Rudolf Steiner's agricultural course is nearly 100 years old now. So it is an old system. And when we started, and I say we, as many of you were involved here, when we started to develop this system, this was the kind of technology we used at that time. Remember these floppy disks? And the first cell phones was of this size, very heavy, very, very um, expensive to use. And this has changed. To, today we are talking about the industry 4.0, right? We are talking about digital tools, artificial intelligence. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they maintain huge data centers uh, to maintain data we all use here. Cell phones, smartphones come every second, new versions. So the, the evolution of techn technology is, is really uh, very, very fast. At the same time, the market when we started was really small, local, and um, really based on some strange guys who wanted to change the world. So uh, it was really, everything was uh, really basic, basic equipment, etc. Today, we are talking about a huge one, over 100 billion US dollar market uh, in, in total. So this is a, a, a very professional market today. Uh, supermarkets and retails have taken up the, the uh, products as there is money to make. And that's, that's okay, right? Uh, we all appreciate that the market is, is uh, evolving and, and growing and um, the external control and certification system also at that time was certainly paper-based, that's clear, because that was the tool of that time. Paper was the tool, there was nothing else than that. Uh, but Michelle already uh, uh, a bit of information how that could work today, uh, working on site, but also using satellite data 
uh, using Internet of Things, uh, uh, using uh, precision farming data. There are a lot of tools there, uh, Google integration or uh, ge geographic indication, where even uh, satellites can uh, distinguish between uh, organic and non-organic fields. So the technology has improved a lot here. Augmented reality, where you can uh, merge the real reality with the virtual reality. So you have it on one screen and you can um, merge different realities in, in one screen. And drones, also Michelle mentioned that uh, the drone technology is uh, improving a lot and evolving and delivers a lot of data and a lot of possibilities for us in the certification market. And um, inspectors can use mobile phones, smartphones to conduct um, uh, on-site inspections or, or uh, remote inspections. And now I'll come to the next part, which I, I think is also really critical, which is the, the market. The market still relies on paper certificates. Okay, you can say they are not paper anymore. They are PDFs you send around via email. But I can create any, any certificate in two minutes with Photoshop or other tools. It is very simple to create a certificate today, but it is still the base of the market. And I think this need to change. So this is another driver beside the pandemic uh, to go digital, real-time certification, quantity data, uh, to have them available, mass balancing and encryption. And I want to introduce here just quickly Check Organic, which is a tool basically combining the certification data with transaction data to calculate a mass balance uh, back to the field where the product was grown and um, following it, uh, making, uh, making a mass a balance of each entity. Uh, so it's an income outcome balance and the traffic light system can then lead the attention to those who are over delivering, which is um, uh, very effective. It is not a, a, a pure or conventional or old uh, traceability system where you follow the lots, every physical movement, it's a mass balance system, which creates a lot of value here for us. And I want to also put this into a landscape because IT tools are there. We here as organic services, we uh, created a lot of tools because we have been involved in, in many IT projects. There, I mentioned uh, Check Organic here. Um, Michelle mentioned eCert. eCert is the big uh, certification platform uh, used by all, nearly all leading certification bodies. There is a basic version, the eCert Basic. And Group Integrity is another version of eCert, which is dedicated to facilitate the ICS systems, internal control systems. So uh, basically, you can track uh, all the and document all internal inspections and PGS system as well. So you can track and prove that the internal quality management is working and everything is documented. Um, these are all great tools and I really want to um, uh, invite you to check them out. Uh, call me and it's a YouTube channel. You will go to YouTube and search for organic services. And you'll find a lot of videos also from last presentations at Biofach. And Sarah's presented their uh, really nice um, presentation about uh, mass balance and the problems in China. There uh, was a group, uh, Yakao in Latin America, talking about the group integrity thing. So please check that out. I have a video here. And Ravi, maybe you want to put that on the screen just to have a, a little example of that. If that does not work. It's working, yeah. Just one moment. He's on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great.
So shall I take over again, Ravi? Or no, no, Ravi is you... showing the presentation. Okay. Is... Perfect. Exactly, this page. So I want to emphasize that uh, food fraud is another driver for digitalization, just like the pandemic. And uh, to be clear on that, food fraud is not an organic issue. It is a, uh, an issue of criminals taking advantage of different kind of um, uh, ways how to cheat the consumer. Next, please. It is always about um, changing ingredients, whether selling horse meat as beef or whether putting uh, water into uh, fruit juice or mislabeling, it is always about um, putting or using a low price product and sell that uh, on a higher price. And certainly organic is one target in this, in this market. Next, please. I have added two slides here. If we have time enough, uh, Sandeep, can we go into that two minutes or yeah, shall please, I skip please that? Go ahead. Yeah, please yeah. go ahead, two minutes. So, uh, one stream is from uh, certification bodies. We need data per operator, per product, including data of the fields. That's very, very important to, to close the chain to back to the fields. Next, please. The other string is uh, that we need data from transactions. Like we have in traces here in Europe, uh, Czech Organic can track the transactions, which is important to um, then uh, combine the two data strings from certifiers and traders to put them together and check whether a, an operator, whether it is a farmer or a trader or a manufacturer, whether it is he or she is uh, certified according to a organic regulation and whether the mass balance is okay. That's critical here. Next, please. So to come to an end, um, uh, as you can imagine, I am a strong promoter of digitalization. It is key for the sector to get further growth. Again, it's key. It's really key. Uh, it is a block today. Uh, interoperability is another key. Interfaces, very important to keep systems open. Fraud is a big threat for investments, so we need to protect the market. It's high time to go digital in, on all levels. Technology is available, and I want to, in particular, uh, stress here that grower groups and certifiers need to use this technology much more than they do today. Um, there are first projects, uh, uh, Michel EcoCert Control Unit, has, they have good tools, but there is much, much more to come. And the credibility uh, is uh, what we have to protect. And this is our goal. And if we use these tools, we can further grow the market to 10, 20, 100 percent. That's my first message here. Thank you for jo joining in. Thank you so much, Frank, for and also Michelle for this uh, insightful and helpful information. Also exciting uh, news sometimes. And um, so we just have a question for both of us, and I will start with Michelle. And uh, so as we heard already, and many of us or from the farmer side experienced that, uh, that there are a lot of challenges from, uh, from the lockdown during pandemic. Do you think that the, that, that has pushed the digitalization? You already told us, but it's a step-by-step -step approach, as you also said. But uh, do you have a kind of overview how it works in India from uh, your uh, certifiers here, control body people? And uh, do you think so, especially India, is uh, prepared for the step to go more digital? Yes, uh, I 
just mentioned in my presentation already that we will move to digitalizations, but um, uh, maybe I forget to point it some things. It's it's interesting because we are reviewing the um, organic regulation in Europe uh, already, and we see the whole reflex to have papers and papers or copies. And uh, uh, I um, um, Frank mentioned the example of uh, uh, traces, which is this uh, digital uh, of certificate and transaction certificate. But still, the Commission says yes, but uh, the um, um, at the point of entry, we should have a copy of the certificate. So people are really still rely on papers. But I think it's more um, a European probably uh, uh, st uh, approach still. And um, answering to you uh, concerning India, uh, I don't know exactly why I at India. I'm not so in operative details uh, uh, situation. What I know, what I know from India, it's you are probably much more open for digitalizations. And also you have a more than a book country you are uh, india is quite a continent uh, uh, itself so big so uh, in order to, to to go from a to b and the digitalization will be probably uh, much more used uh, in india and uh, i'm afraid that in europe we will have to run after uh, but not due to the actors but more due to the administrations we have uh, an administration where i think it's going little bit in the heads but it takes time and um and i hope that also new generation will uh, push on this and what's the reason is important and if i have a recommendation to uh, uh, to give to all of us and we try to do the consent please employ young people they will move and make these transitions uh, i'm too old for also, i'm not one to say to i'm too old for this uh, i try to follow it but i'm a follower but I'm not one who will push. I, I think I'm out for this, and um, and I think it's very important to have this uh, this young people entering uh, in the different companies, and I hope also in the administration to uh, to make this uh, visible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michelle. So now we go to the young Frank. Already is uh, was on <laughs> digitization. Frank, uh, there's a question from a participant, and also was a question from Karen and I. Uh, will all this technology, will it increase the cost of certification? And if yes, by how much percentage or how is it, will it double or, or be half? Or could you please share what will be the impact on the cost of all this uh, digitization? For me, digitalization is uh, an accelerator. So we need digitalization to not increase cost. Today, Czech Organic is a percent uh, uh, euro fee cent euro cent per ton so this is not a cost issue it's a political and organizational issue we have implemented the system in italy 100 percent of the italian organic grain was kept in this system uh, so it is it is there it was about uh, i think eighty thousand tons of grain was there per year um, so it is not a it is not a cost problem it is a uh, a challenge for administration administration also in europe is still afraid uh, of technology there is uh, you know all kind of data protection against everything but uh, this needs to be changed I, I i'm so sure and i'm not so much younger than than michelle but uh, um, I, I agree totally young people uh, young farmers young inspectors they don't want to use paper or things like that. And for me, digitalization is an accelerator to scale up the business, to be able to, uh, can you imagine to have 30% of the world growing organic and this is monitored by third party certification? Think about that. How would that work? We need digitalization to scale up. It is the base for scaling up without IT without digitalization, it is not possible because the products will be become too expensive. Thank you. Thank you, Frank, for that very insightful answer. Uh, so now, uh, dear participants, we'll have a short uh, video. Uh, Ravi, could you play that uh, break video, please?
thank you, Ravi. Ravi, can we have the slide about uh, Vigo Digital, please? So, dear participants, I'd like to inform you again, as uh, Shiva Kumar, our director, shared in the beginning. What you saw was the BioFAC from last year, and this year uh, BioFAC is going digital. It's going to be a one-year-long event where all stakeholders can engage with their consumers, and uh, B2B, B2C meetings will be held online for one full year. And uh, we'll have contact details put up in the chat room, or you can contact Ravi and Kamal uh, for more details on how we can go about that. Uh, now we'll run a quick poll after listening to these two presentations. We would like to hear from you. Uh, what you feel would be impact of COVID on the certification process? And uh, you have about 20 seconds to, to answer these questions. I'm opening the poll now. Thank you. Thank you all for, for your responses. And uh, you can see the results of the poll on the screen. And we will now have our, our next presenters share uh, about how right we were on the poll. So it is my great uh, pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Binay Kumar Choudhury, who is with us today. Uh, he's the chairman of Control Union India. And he started his career as a technical manager and head for the Regional Center Food Research and Analytical Center here in Bangalore in the year 2001. And then he shifted uh, his focus towards research in, um, in feed uh, additives by joining the US-based multinational organization, Kemen. Dr. Choudhury joined Control Union in March 2005 and is currently the chairman for the India operation. He has extensive knowledge on organic fibers, organic textile certification in various countries. He has been awarded several national and international awards, fellowships for research, and is involved as an advisor in various forums. As a certification expert, he has audited more than 500 farms and 1,000 textile projects related to organic cotton in various countries. Dr. Benai, the screen is yours. Namaskar. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And it is my pleasure to speak on this event. I thank all these uh, participants for allowing me to present on this pandemic. So to start with this, uh, I would like to thank Mr. Sandeep and all the BIFAC team who has given us a chance to speak on the uh, pandemic situations about the certifications. Next slide. Yes. So uh, while talking, because I have already spoken, I'm the third participant to speak on uh, this uh, auditing process. So I'll speak a little bit on Control Union and how we do digitalization and remote auditing, which Michael and Frank has already spoken about it. And I also uh, speak a little bit about the challenges that is uh, possible with the group certifications and the traceability and fraud protections. Next, Control Union just completed 100 years in the certification process, and we are, like Ecoshet and uh, Frank says, that we are in the process of digitalization. However, there are, we tell in India that there is five Indriyas, like Pancha Indriyas, like ear, eyes, nose, and these actually are giving a sensitive uh, interactions during audit process, which is a challenge for digitalization. Next slide. Next, next, next. Go to next. So basically we do supply chain certifications and in supply chain certifications, you have got various challenges. The first challenge is that how you reach to the people, how to reach to the place. And that's what when the March 24, we got locked down in India, we started thinking about that, how the business will occur how different process will start. And that's what there are mind openings. So I think that COVID situation or the pandemic situation has not only given to look about immunity in the human being, but also given a chance to talk about how certification can be more transparent, how certification can be more, uh, more realization through digitalization. So in this conversion process, some standard owners 
they started thinking that they can give extension of scope certificate just providing time to come out from this pandemic but it is a pandemic which will carry for a long time and hence everybody needs uh, to think and open their mind as you know that organic is something which has to realize at the field level so you need to have a lot of eyes and a lot of physical chemical social and microbiological or the uh, biological challenges to observe in the field hence audit with digitalization make little bit challenging so some of the remote auditing that has happened during the pandemic was really good challenge people have used uh, microsoft hololens in uh, uh, control union wherever the operators have allowed so this hololens is a 3d actually uh, 180 degree uh, view point so when somebody is walk in the field you can see whole the picture and you can observe what is going on as in real time basis and some people started looking to different platform where they can see and talk and various uh, 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 realization process to reach the oddity and find the real factual situations and uh, in the workplace so that was a challenge to give so that's what i told that physical chemical biological and social challenges has been uh, found during digitalization though we are one step ahead uh, and we have got digitalization certification last 12 years back and people are checking the qr code or scan the bar code and different uses different means to authenticate certificates however there are facts which need to be verified during the uh, auditing situations next slides so in this if you look that some people think that uh, doing a remote audit uh, reduce the cost yes no doubt the traveling cost is reduced staying of auditor cost is reduced but the auditor need to have a good management which also added some cost the auditor sitting at remote place has to think about the audit place a prior knowledge is very very essential if you do not have seen different kind of biodiversity different kind of regional sense and different kind of agroclimatic regions then the auditor finds it difficult to verify the remote audits hence a pre audit uh, training is very very essential to talk about different situations different agro agroclimatic regions and different uh, different auditing uh, tricks during the remote process improved document process document process is one of the process which is actually the clients are oriented in india and in other countries to reach out so we thought that india is having multiple states and in every states we have got different offices and we can reach to the people if uh, the there is no restrictions however uh, keeping your auditor well trained about covid 19 guidelines will safeguard to your auditor for doing the audit which is basic prerequisite before the auditing process next slide so in this case uh, the burden on the audit will should not be more and the stress created by the audit to get several document in place so your workflow whatever you have written in your system plan or guidance document after you give a application form is a challenging one so you should be clear that what exactly your expectation during your remote audit so we have seen that in case of processing unit it was quite uh, confident people were doing very well however in some cases where standard audits has applied that remote audit can be possible in the farm situation it was quite challenging because of the network issue because of various uh, proximity and various phones that is used by the client and this will be a big challenge while looking into the audit uh, at remote place but some of the standard owners very uh, particular to do a real time audit hence this challenge uh, to reach to the audit place is uh, quite difficult however you have to make a means to reach to the audit place and make sure that in a minimum contact or uh, putting a proper uh, proximity uh, uh, distance or isolation distance the auditor can perform the job and verify the audit facts next slide next slides the limitation is that uh, when you are doing a remote auditing you do not as i said that you cannot feel it uh, as if you know you are doing something at distance so some auditor has to be uh, do some mock audit 
before you do a remote audit with audit. So it was very essential tax for us to teach our auditor uh, a mock audit process that how to uh, talk to the auditee and uh, how to questions because there are some restrictions that what you can ask and what you cannot ask because this digital process you are restricted and you have to take permission from the other party whether anything confidentiality how you check through the uh, system some people in india they tell that zoom is not a right means to do that some people they do that these are all uh, so, uh, the things which is not allowed and this does not give safety and security data so we should be very much careful that whatever you are using should secure your data and that is very very important and remote auditing uh, to build a rapport with the auditee is very essential so we teach all the auditors how to make a, a rapport with auditee and that is essential to verify the facts and the uh, uh, facts and the audit trends. There is a chance of uh, fraudulent at uh, every moment, but the question is that to verify a document on a real time basis. If your audit workflow is perfect, then you can uh, very well, you can know that what exactly you are verifying on a real time basis. So your questionnaires, your social contact to the, uh, uh, through a digitalization is very important to verify the facts. Next slides. So in this uh, moment, the first factor is that plan, prepare, execute, and report the audit validations. So in this way, your priorities has to be defined and your priorities has to be understood by the auditing. And that's what a clear cut or transparent plan should be expected uh, from the auditor. And whatever the use, uh, you use the tools uh, to, to verify the facts and audit should be accepted by the auditee. So you must ensure that whatever the tools you are using and whatever you are asking to share must be admitted or accepted by the auditee. So there are uh, various uh, processes that we have used. And uh, in these processes, we have seen that the email process is quite effective and we get most of the documents uh, before and our expectations before the audit is done. To validate the report and to validate your audits and facts, so a team of people and experts, they sit and uh, they finalize the report. And uh, in this way, we prepare the report and uh, prepare our uh, certification process. Next. So there are a lot of uh, facts that is uh, uh, possible. Some people are really feeling a challenge because some of the people entering to the village is very well uh, uh, planned. You should do that because some of the uh, villages, people do not allow to enter into the villages. So one should be very, very uh, cautious to enter to the village and to talk to the farms and uh, farmers land which is very, very challenging at this time, at this time. And hence, there are multi-phase uh, multi approach need to be uh, adopted. And you should take the consent of the client to do whatever your audit trend is there. It should be accepted to the client. And you should find out their problems before you start the audits, which is very, very essential and prerequisite. Next slides. So regarding traceability and mass balance, mass balance can be easily uh, done through a uh, digital system. While looking to the traceability in the uh, digitalization moment, it is also possible if your system allows, or else like we have got in India, we have got a traceable system. So traceability is very, 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 very useful. But in case of some other organic, uh, like uh, private certifications, like GOTS and TE, where there is the absence of, uh, uh, a common system and that uh, is a challenge for each certification body how to deal with the traceability so be sure that your traceable documents are well verified before you issue a transaction certificate for the scope that you have given next slide so uh, the trends, uh, the principle of uh, mass balance and traceability and facts verifications as very much clarified by the auditor by the certifier, by the evaluator, and by the certification manager. So in this case, the whole supply chain traceability with transparent may happen. Or else you end up with a lot of arguments 
and lot of uh, you know mistrust miscommunication which will end up with uh, uh, not a good result for the certifications so hence i i i strongly recommend to all these auditing companies that they should prepare plan before the audit happens and they should give a good training to the auditor to cope up of this uh, very difficult situation that the auditor will face with the auditee next so as you as already frank and michael they are very much well versed with the uh, digital traceability yes digital traceability is the next future and we all admit that people will go for the digital traceability however there is miss uh, uh, there is a, a mixed reaction to say that this uh, whatever we see uh, in our eyes and what we do during audit process keeping physical chemical social and biological condition in place actually the digitalization may not do so digitalization need artificial intelligence and further to robotics that will take care in the future development and if artificial intelligence through robotics can do a, a beautiful a network and make replacement partly to our panchendriyas like ear eyes nose this kind of uh, sense system then i think uh, we will do a very good digitalization certification movement thank you very much next slide so i think this uh, everybody knows uh, the buying process stock management firm on list and agreement mass balance and production records so this uh, is possible by digitalizations so we generally do with our online system and we verify the facts and data and that's not a bigger problem for anybody to do that next slide batch number barcode qr code these are some of the means we have used in the digitalized process this is actually really helpful next slide so i think i have given a complete picture so uh, thank you very much for your time if you have any question please ask me further thank you thank you dr binay kare no over to you yes thank you very much so now uh, we go on with the last presentation and it's my pleasure to introduce vishala patmanaban a fellow member of the institute of uh, are you, are you here? Vichala? I'm here. Yeah, so I'll just introduce you uh, to Chartered Accountant in India with a specification in system audit. She is also co-founder of Buffalo Back Collective, a platform to bring together small and marginal, marginal uh, organic farmers, producer companies, NGOs, and consumers of organic food. And uh, She's a strong believer in local food systems and the importance of small and marginal farmers in food justice, conservation of biodiversity, and has facilitated various campaigns and discussions forum forums around the same. She's also uh, the consultant executive director of BGS, Organic Council, a pan india society of organic farming practitioners who have subscribed to the principle of participatory guaranteed systems so now we want to also get in this pgs system in our discussion and uh, so i would like to uh, to uh, yeah give the screen to you vishala thank you Thank you, thank you, Karen. Thank you to the uh, thanks to the entire uh, BioFact team for bringing all of us together on this digital platform, and uh, thanks to all the earlier speakers, Michelle, Frank, and Kai, for taking us through the certification. I today I uh, I am giving a presentation probably on behalf of uh, the ten thousand small and medium. Which is organic council is the society is the non-profit society for India to start PGS in India. The education system was introduced in India by PGS organic council, and today we have the government of India also running the PGS system. Can you go to the next slide? Uh, so we started PGS. Uh, Vishala, you are not clear. Uh, <laughs> 
get off the mic or I'll put the mic or try something else. We can't hear you clearly. Am I better without the mic? Yeah, much better. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, so PGS Organic Council was started uh, by and CSOs, uh, civil society organizations, and these are the logos, or these are our current members, and also the people who came together to start PGS in India. And these are grassroots level organizations which have been closely working with farmers, basically to starting from probably promoting organic agriculture, or in certain places there were default organic farmers who just needed this exposure to uh, to many things. Not just it's it's not always been about market for PGS, but PGS always began with uh, keeping or with aggregating or putting together the knowledge systems that exist within communities. So PGS began with that and market has only been an add-on for PGS, which came in probably much later. Next slide, please. So uh, the I think I should set the tone on what, what exactly organic agriculture means for PGS because uh, I guess when we when we uh, speak a lot about certifications in the market, uh, I sometimes or many times fear that the idea of what exactly organic agriculture is and the principles of organic agriculture, which are so vital uh, in the entire food systems, may actually take a backseat. So for PGS and for small and marginal farmers and for generally for agriculture, we look at the basic principles of organic farming, which are which are the guiding forces. These are the guiding forces for the PGS system also to evolve. Uh, and the basic principles remain health, ecology, care, and fairness. And these basic principles are carried through the PGS system from inception till the food actually reaches the consumers. So at a, every point, every interaction, every point, every point where there's an exchange of farm produce or from the time we grow and we exchange our farm produce or do the farming along with um, all the other beings that are important to do farming, which is soil, plants, animals, humans. So there are these principles which are kept intact right through the entire process. So this is organic agriculture for us. And as we are in this slide, I would also actually try to uh, uh, remind ourselves that in the Indian context, we are talking about farmers, we are talking about small and marginal farmers who are today 80% of the farming community in our country. And data, available data says that 80% of the food consumed in developing world is produced by small farmers. And it's also a fact that small holders contribute the least to global warming. warming. So agriculture practice in its organic agriculture practice in its true sense with preservation of biodiversity and care for ecological systems uh, is what is the basic premise or the foundation on which PGS is based on. Can we move to the next slide? So why participatory guarantee and, and why is it so important for a country like India from an Indian perspective? Uh, because have, I, I would again re-emphasize that the entire focus here is on small and marginal holders uh, who, who come with a specific uh, set of limitations when it comes to a lot of things that we speak about what certification requires for the larger market. So why a participatory guarantee system gives this edge or gives this advantage to these communities, the marginal farmers, who will actually get an opportunity through the system to be part of the larger organic market? The, the $100 billion market that we are talking about today, uh, there is a risk that the small and marginal farmers can actually be left out in this larger market. And PGS can, PGS today is a stepping stone for such small and marginal farmers. So the basic, I think the basic uh, emotions and, and, and the uh, principles on which uh, humanity and generally agriculture works are what participatory guarantee system is also based on. So there is trust which is established, one, at the first level between the farmers who are practicing, who have adopted organic farming as community. So there is trust established between them, which leads, which leads to peer review. So unlike an audit system where a third party auditor visits them, we believe in peer review. So peer review is, is, a, is, a, system, is a simple system where a farmer reviews another farmer. So we believe that organic farming expertise lies with the farmers in our country. So farmers are the experts and they audit each other, they review each other and they 
record and they keep the data in the way that they want it kept or the way it is important for them i mean today's data science also talks about ownership of data and and the generation of data and how generators of data should first be able to use the data that's generated by them and that's exactly what the participatory guarantee system believes in and this peer review process actually creates an horizontal system within within the farmers there are no hierarchies so we don't have um, uh we don't have experts we don't have people uh, competing with each other in fact horizontally a horizontal concept so actually brings a lot of cooperative principles in place and that once this is done at the farm level so what happens is the participatory process largely tries to include the consumers and other stakeholders the other stakeholders could be processors could be aggregators and and could be community based organizations who work with this produce so there is a level of transparency there is a high level of transparency in participatory systems which is which is kind of part of the system and non negotiable and and i think in india self governance is extremely important for the kind of population that we are talking about and for the kind of diverse food systems that we are talking about because organic agriculture is not about monoculture and and including i mean we we have documents of maybe 1 lakh plus varieties of rice available in our country and if we take the entire value chain of rice in terms of processing and making it available in the market probably each variety of rice may require a different kind of processing so there's no one way of doing things in our country we are a country of paradoxes we are a country of diversity so self governance and being able to manage what my agro climatic zone produces like india has 15 agro climatic zones and we have farmers producing a variety of stuff in these uh, agro climatic zones so self governance is also part of integral part of participatory guarantee systems and pgs constantly even in today's context even in 2020 uh, promotes local markets and in terms of resilience and in terms of the ability to actually generate fair revenue i don't think any anybody can dispute the importance of local markets small supply supply chains reduce costs and local markets are definitely any day more viable than long supply chains can we move to the next slide please ravi yeah so what what happened to us during this pandemic situation the last 5 or 6 months is when we had to really deal with the corona virus lockdown yes there were small disruptions but the farming activities like we know in india that i, I think within within a weeks uh, announcement of lockdown the first thing that we were told is that farming activities can continue so farming activities literally never stop it never stops in any farmers place especially in our small holder farmers i don't think we ever see farming activities stop at any point in time so farming activities continue but we saw when in in the cities especially because i live in bangalore in cities we saw that third party audits were getting difficult because of travel restrictions and complex food uh, food supply chains with many with large vehicles carrying stuff actually couldn't enter the boundaries of borders of bangalore and market places were shut the lockdown meant that market places were shut the next slide so what happened in pgs oc was today when we look back uh, and and look at what 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 were what, what were we doing when the lockdown happened honestly speaking it was business as usual for us peer reviews easily happened because there was less mobility people did not have to travel long distances the farmers were all neighbors so peer reviews continued we had absolutely no stoppage of reviews and our data systems are all maintained locally like i said i think it's very important that the data collected is first available to the farmers for their own decision making and rather than having it in a place which is different from where they are so localized data collection and keeping the data for themselves for decision making went on smoothly we had absolutely no disruption local markets functioned probably we had a very small disruption when vehicles were not allowed but then when we could get the e passes local markets functioned really well in fact we saw increased demand from consumers for uh, pgs produce because the farmers or the youngsters from the village were were volunteering actually to help the farmers to reach out to the farm uh, consumers the next slide ravi and what was also uh, really nice for us or wonderful for us was that 
all the community mobilization that goes into PGS, where we have already built systems on people meeting each other occasionally, people sharing knowledge systems with each other, and people also coming together to run community enterprises. I think we could do a little, much, little bit more for the community uh, during this lockdown and pandemic situation. In fact, we had our members distributing surplus among people, among the migrant laborers who returned home, uh, who, were, who, who did not have easy access to food when they came back home. So there were a lot of re redistribution of surplus happy, happening within the communities. And communities of women farmers actually came together to go around uh, creating awareness on COVID, on why wearing a mask is important, why social distancing is important, and why hygiene and handling food is important. So we had, we could easily kind of empower these communities, the peer groups, we call them local groups. So local groups came together um, very easily to understand these and actually be able to implement within their communities. And inputs. Availability of inputs uh, on input dependent organic farmers actually came to a standstill during the um, uh, corona lockdown. But uh, in resilient farmers, in small farming communities where seed banking happens locally and where credit facilities are available locally, none of it stopped. So community support for land preparation, shared labor, shared seeds, everything fell in place during the corona times. Next slide, Ravi. So we had we had a lot of learnings, and in in PGS we have always been sure that small systems are resilient, local systems are more resilient, and it always makes sense that people take charge of their food themselves. And and we were always convinced that cooperatives are the future, and we were also. Uh, we, we always knew that it's important that indigenous practices are are continued and, and there is the biodiversity that is important is kept intact and indigenous practices for preservation or processing are continued. The corona times, the lockdown actually just, just reconfirmed everything for us and gave us this hope that yes, PGS has a very, very strong foundation based on what exactly is needed in the food system. So it was now, now actually we, we, we also decided to take on the little challenges that we have always had a little more seriously and probably that here I would be touching upon things that the previous uh, speaker spoke about, which is about technology. So we also said, okay, now let's, let's start adopting technology, but then how do we do it for PGS? Can you go to the next slide, Ravi? So. I think a little bit to the future was uh, because PGS started with the organic movement, the fulcrum or the nuclei of PGS has always been only the farmers, uh, only the producers. So now uh, during Corona, what we realized is that there was a lot of interest in consumers because people were at home, people were eating more, people were cooking more all these days and people were actually getting conscious about health and trying to figure out the source of their food. So when we started having discourses, when we started discussing about PGS with consumers and started inquiring if they would like to be an active part of it, we were actually quite impressed by the uh, response in metro cities like Bangalore, uh, Chennai and Hyderabad, where people actually took efforts to understand what PGS meant and how they could contribute to be part of the PGS. So now I think the next step for us would be to adopt simple technologies which will connect the key stakeholders. So for us, the stakeholders are mainly the farmers and the consumers. They are the center of our system. So we are now looking at technology, simple technology, which can give data access to just these key stakeholders who actually need the data to, to be assured or to be guaranteed of organic food. Next slide, please. Yes. And another other challenge which we have always had, uh, but again, uh, uh, Corona actually, COVID times actually gave us an opportunity to put out the, the biodiversity that we actually talk about. We do grow in our villages, we grow a variety of food in our villages, but then hardly any of it reach the plates of people who consume them, especially in urban cities which are really disconnected from, uh, let's, let's assume a city like Bangalore, where the peri-urban spaces are also thinning down to monoculturing or to cash crops, it's quite difficult for a city like Bangalore to get the huge biodiversity of foods that we have. 
So we have always been trying to work hard on getting those foods to the cities, which are more nutritious, which also offer more food security to the farmers and will avoid monocropping, will actually make their own their organic practices also better. And this could be also uncultivated foods and forest produce. So PGS is now evolving. And the next step that we are taking on is to again connect urban systems to food, food biodiversity. Next slide. So I think... So, uh, so one thing that yes, we understand we were uh, lacking in, or uh, we haven't really explored on a large scale. Of course, we do use technology. Uh, I, when I say we use less of it, doesn't mean that we are extremely primitive. In fact, PGS India has a very nice application, a web-based application in which a lot of key data is captured, and the data stakeholders are clearly defined so that their usage of the data is also uh, controlled. Uh, in PGS Organic Council, also we have our own data management system, but uh, in our data management systems, we put the key stakeholders, the people who need the data in the center of it. So when we talk about technology, our technology talks about accessibility, our technology talks about how, how smaller things can be made, how easier things can be made for farmers and the consumers. So this is about what PGS is generally and what PGS OC does specifically in India. Thank you so much. I hope I have not overshot the time. Yeah, thank you, Vishala. Karen, over to you. Yeah, so thank you so much for all these presentations. We are really delighted, I guess, our audience too. So now uh, we go to a kind of uh, discussion round so we want to ask you if you can give us your key conclusions of this session and highlight the learnings that you got from the other presenters and uh, yeah just uh, we got the other way around we would like to start with Vishala if she's available Vishala yes I'm here no, yeah, sure. Your just takeaways in two minutes about. Uh, yeah, can you short just uh, give us your key uh, takeaways? Yeah, I have generally been following the, the the certification trends that's going on around us because it's also important for us to understand being part of the same market and and being ta talking the same language of organic food and organic agriculture. I have been following up and definitely I have. I think today's um, presentations gave me a, a deeper understanding of uh, where we are headed in terms of uh, certification. Uh, but yeah, I, I uh, understand the importance of audit. I, uh, In fact, I have been a chartered accountant for a large part of my life and I understand the importance of a third party audit. But I also view Indian farmers as uh, experts. So, so the idea of a third party uh, audit and, and, uh, and I think I need a little more uh, clarity, which is uh, I'll probably explore further. Uh, but thanks to all three of them for throwing light on uh, how uh, they are looking at future, how they are looking at the future of organic food. And, and it's it's amazing to see that the industry is growing uh, at a large extent, and I'm, and I'm sure it's because of these certification systems, which provide that guarantee to the larger consumers that we are able to grow at that pace. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Vishala. Uh, Doctor Binay, can I ask you for a yes. quick takeaway for the next two two minutes? Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the panelists who has given a clear picture that what the future would be. Uh, looking to that, actually, we, we really think of a better future for further, not only organic. It is something which we have to go to back to basics like regenerative agriculture or something where we can give stakeholders like farmers a better challenge or better portion uh, or better stake, or stake in the system, supply chain system. And also I could uh, able to learn that uh, the digitization uh, through various means to make a transparent approach in the supply chain so that uh, whatever the consumer is eating uh, should be highlighted to the farm and it should be a more transparent approach. And with this also, I could also learn that uh, this uh, pandemic situation, we need to understand each other and help each other with technologies, share uh, different platforms. If somebody has got some innovations, 
and we can share each other and make this journey more successful and useful for future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Binney. Karen, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Frank, it's uh, for you. The screen is yours. Please give us your key takeaways of this session. Oh, uh, I think the situation uh, in India is very special, specific. I appreciate the PGS approach. It was uh, really nice to learn more about that, although I'm already familiar with it. And I think it's a, a great approach for selling products on the local market. It is it is great. However, there were many questions in the in the chat. Uh, when it comes to export, you need uh, to have a third party certification, and there is no way around it. If you want to export to the US or to the uh, European Union, you need to be certified. And Control Union and EcoCert and many other certifiers are there to help you out here. So this is. I, I, I learned that it's still not clear uh, what is PGS and what is uh, certified organic. So that was uh, a takeaway. And another takeaway is to strengthen PGS. PGS is a great system. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Michel, can we have your... Uh key takeaways in the next yes, one. For sure. Yes, for sure. Thank you. Um, first, I, I will come back on one sentence and very important, I think, from uh, uh, Vishaya is uh, we should keep in mind that the organic food and agriculture must be resilient and to build up a system. And I think that uh, all the community with uh, uh, PGS, but also without PGS, I think it's very important to build up this uh, resilient uh, uh, system that organic mostly uh, uh, is doing. W what I keep from this, I think it's very interesting and I will really thank you, Sanip and Karin, to uh, uh, to make um, uh, to open um, this uh, webinar to PGS and third party because I think we we should not opposite the both. I think it's really complementary and responding to different issues, uh, and one is complementary to uh, to the other one. And I think it's very important to have this organic community what the PGS is uh, uh, is also doing and we with the third certification we we try to build that bridge uh, between also the uh, organic community i think we will have to face to many challenges i think what we i take this uh, take away now is that how interesting the organic uh, sectors and community has react with the pandemic uh, finding sort of solutions from the PGS side from the third party side and i think we uh, we are, and I hope this seminar, as this webinar, will help to uh, uh, when we will we come back to our offices or our place to draw up the future of certifications and the futures of certifications. I make a hess at the end because there are many ways, and uh, I think we will uh, uh, must be open to use the new tools, but uh, we must keep in mind that technology is only a tool and is a part of the solutions. But we should not uh, also forget the uh, human people, which is also the key of our uh, social uh, relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Karen, over to you. Yes. Uh, thank you. We're, time is running so fast. It was so exciting. It was so interesting. So much input. Um, I think uh, we have more than 200 uh, people that uh, attended this session and uh, I think all are happy to know so much more than in the beginning now. So uh, we are thankful also to uh, Nuremberg Messe India, Biofach, who makes that uh, possible, this uh, webinar series, and uh, we are looking forward to continue. And uh, so in two weeks, uh, same time, same place, we will welcome you to another important topic. So that is about, we are talking about then about sustainability reporting from uh, an exclusive future to a must have. So as we all know, we the organic community um, fairness, uh, traceability, and so on, is all included in organic. Uh, but um, for people outside who join the organic uh, sector and buy organic food, uh, they want to know more about background and they 
um, are happy to have all these background stories uh, of sustainability. And there are some exciting systems uh, and we have great speakers for next time. So tune in and over to you, Sandeep. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, and like Karen mentioned, uh, the focus next time will be on true cost accounting as well. So that's a very interesting feature on when why people always ask this question of why organic is expensive. So, so we have again world renowned experts next time. Please tune in. Also, I'd like to remind you, Ravi, can we have the digital edition screen, please? There were many questions we couldn't answer all of them. Please uh, send them to BOFAC uh, webinars uh, BOFAC at nm India, BOFAC.webinars at nm India.com. And uh, uh, I've put the Kamal's and Ravi's. Uh, email address, you can go to the BOFAC India website because we are going digital. So many of your questions could be answered on this digital platform. If you want to check out the certifying bodies, you want to look at new markets for your products, all is available here. And this will be the first time in the world where it's a one year long event. So it will be for 12 months where you can engage and find out more about organic and all the stakeholders in India. Uh, so thank you very much for your participation. And I will see you all, I hope to see you all in two weeks time. Uh, in the upcoming webinar, which says, uh, like Karen said, sustainability reporting from an exclusive tool to a must have for market access and visibility. Uh, may we have the short video uh, to say goodbye to our participants? Ravi? Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you all, you. panelists as well. Once again, thank you all. Uh, thank you all for attending and see you in, in two weeks uh, for our next webinar. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.